Um, I think the biggest winners on the Steelers, and maybe you know, you got different thoughts here. Kenny Pickett, obviously, you know, to have Darnell Washington and a franchise left tackle, that's huge. Najee Harris, though. I think yeah. there is no bigger winner coming out of this draft than Najee to sit there and be like, it has been two very, very long years of a developing offensive line. And he's walking into this season with the right side, which is already cemented in Chooks, James Daniels, and then Mason Cole. And now he just got a new left guard that he feels that you have to feel very confident in. Like the dude just went to the Super Bowl on the best yeah. running team in football. Right. That was the best offensive line in football, too. Like the best was... offensive line in football. And he was the starting left guard. Now he's in Pittsburgh. And you just drafted an absolute freak of a left tackle and the biggest tight end in the NFL um, instantly who right. teams were asking at the NFL combined if he would move to tackle in the NFL, <laughs> if given the opportunity. So he's mm. clearly knows how to block like nashi has got to be on cloud nine right now thinking, right. wow, this is about to be a wild year. Yeah. I absolutely agree. Um, Najee's probably the biggest winner. I'd say another one is Terrell Austin. Like he got yes. some great pieces, some like great weapons on on defense to play around with between Benton, Trice, Herbig, and then obviously Porter too. He's just got he's got options now. Um, I felt like we came into this offseason looking at the defense and thinking, wow, the cupboard's kind of bare. Their options, you know, either they're re-signing free agents that you're not super thrilled with, or you're going to the draft and counting on a lot of rookies, but they made some moves in the off season that made these draft moves. I felt like even stronger, you know, yeah. um, signing Patrick Peterson makes that Joey Porter, uh, addition, like look really great. Tries ben, too, the, because if you, if oh, you yeah. tries to develop, I mean, that's the guy you need to develop with. Oh yeah, absolutely. And then, you know, you already have, uh, you know, some starting linebackers you feel like in there. So Herbig can come along too. He's got guys to learn from. Same with Benton, uh, like Keanu Benton getting to learn from Cam Hayward. That's like, that seems ideal. Um, yep. Yeah. Like I think Terrell Austin is another big winner in just the defense as a whole. You now look at it and what comes next, you know, like what, what moves can still be made. And I think they set themselves up for that perfectly as well. Like Akella Witherspoon has been a guy that's been teetering on, is he going to stay? Is he going to go? What's going to happen here? You don't cut Akella Witherspoon. What you do is either you bring him into the off season or into the summer and you feel really good about him, or you trade them and you get right. a fifth round value for this guy. And boom, you just added another fifth round pick and replaced him with a rookie that you got in the seventh round. Like that's got to feel that that's got to feel so good. You now allow Patrick Peterson to really genuinely move around. You add another option to replace Arthur Millette in coverage at times. Yeah, it's just. The what they did was you you take pressure off of Mark Robinson because you yeah. know Nick Herbig could play off ball and off the edge, so it feels two two holes there. And you're not looking at Braden Fajoko and Armand Watts as your only starters at nose tackle. Keanu Benton could start and learn at the same time, play right. two downs at nose tackle, one down at defensive tackle. Like that's huge. Like what they did was was yeah. so so big, 